Hi folks, this is Jake from Tier 3 Tactical. Today we're going to talk about a program I wrote a little while back called the 5 Week Strength and Conditioning Program for Intermediate Athletes. This is part one of a multi-part series and we're going to talk about the specifics of this program, what's it, what it's designed to do in terms of your fitness and who it's for. In terms of who's designed for, this is when I wrote this, I was looking at helping athletes that have at least six months of experience in the gym, athletes who have safe technique on the major lifts, and this is going to be a good program for team sports athletes in the off season, people that play rugby, football, hockey, soccer, etc., or you know any other kind of strength and conditioning athlete that needs a strength base and maybe put on some muscle mass. This is also going to be appropriate for advanced athletes who are returning to training after taking a break. But most importantly, this is this program designed to be done in a home gym or a facility that's not a full, um, you know, a full box where you, you may not have every single piece of equipment you want, or you may not have um, some certain functional fitness pieces of equipment. So it's going to be limited on equipment, but it's still going to be plenty hard, as you will see. Let's get some housekeeping things out of the way and answer a few commonly asked questions. Um, all my programs are going to be read in a vertical column being one day's worth of work. Um, the split I normally recommend is five days on, two off, or you can do three on, one off, two on, one off. Um, but you don't have to stick to that. Just do the program sequentially. If you find you need an extra rest day, take an extra rest day and pick up where you left off. If you have any long breaks, of course, you might want to repeat the week prior. Uh, but that's kind of the general gist of how I recommend it. You don't need to worry so much about every little detail. The important thing is that you're consistent and that you uh, do your best to do the program as written. You'll find there's also going to be a PDF download in the article that is linked in the description below. All right, let's get into week one. Looking at the first week of the program, you can see that the first part of every day is going to be some percentage work with a major lift. Mondays it's a bench, Tuesdays back squat. We're looking at a dumbbell bench press on Wednesday, power clean Thursday, and then Friday is a deadlift. So at the specified weights, um, um, and these are percentages of your one rep max. If you don't know that, that's fine. You can pick a weight uh, that's at least 80% or above and do a rep max and then you can put it into a calculator to give you a few ideas. But after that percent work you're going to see uh, some accessory movement that's also going to target an opposite or complementary muscle group depending on the day and that's that next block uh, below the percentage work. And then lastly there's another piece of accessory work that's uh, going to be done before the wad. Um, the box in red are, of course, the wad, and you can see um, a lot of these wads are calisthenics based or um, barbell and dumbbell based. There's, there's nothing fancy here. You're not going to see any wall balls or any CrossFit specific equipment, so this can be done in most home gyms and most commercial gyms as well. Looking at week two, you can see that we've continued on in the same um, schedule as the previous week. There's the same movements but the percentage work is increased in difficulty and you'll also see the accessory movements have also increased in difficulty in terms of either total volume and, and reps or they've increased in terms of my notes requiring you to select a heavier weight. So sometimes you'll see like on the Viking press on Wednesday I'll say leave two reps left in the tank and then heavier than last week. So it's important that you pay attention to those kind of notes because you don't want to take every set to failure. That's fine once in a while, but you're going to overtrain if you do that for every single block. So pay attention to those notes. In week three, we really start to get to some heavier, heavier loads. Um, you can see that last set on the bench press and back squat, we're looking at 89% at three reps, which is going to be very challenging. It's, it's going to be close to the kind of weight that you can handle um, before your form starts to break down. Our calisthenics and accessory movements have also increased in volume. It's important that you be smart with your rest here. If you need to take a little bit of more rest in between, that's fine. Um, I don't specify the rest intervals in this program, so you can... Expect to take two to three minutes for most. If you need a little bit more, that's fine. Don't sweat uh, Don't sweat those details. If I didn't specify the rest, if it's not done EMOM style, don't worry about it. Go when you're ready. And you can see that um, the 
wads are also about the same length. Most wads are going to be a little on the shorter side. Not all of them, um, but they're a little bit shorter so you have a little bit more energy to work on the actual strength and the accessory movements. In week four, you'll find that this is the heaviest week prior to our first deload. So we're looking at up to 91% for a set of three. That's very heavy. And we are looking at probably the heaviest you're going to be for the accessory movements. And the notes are going to be something simple like beat last week's reps. And now when you see something like that, that doesn't necessarily have to be every set you have to beat it. So let's look at Tuesday. It's a stiff leg deadlift. Four by eight. It says beat last week. So if you did 185 for that, you might be able to do um, 190 for all uh, four sets of eight, or you might be um, having to do something like maybe the last set, try a little bit heavier weight, or the last two sets. So don't think it has to be every set the same. You can build up, um, but at the end of the day, the goal is to do a little bit more work in that movement than you did last week. Now hold on, because next week's going to be the deload. This is still going to be moderately heavy. Most of these are going to be around 80% of your one rep max. But the important thing is, is the volume is cut roughly in half. This gives your body a chance to recover from hard training. Now, I really want you to pay attention to that word, recover. Don't uh, take this opportunity to add in a little extra work. That's very counterproductive. Um, you want to use this as a chance to recover. The metaphor I like to explain this as, if you think about if you took a piece of sandpaper, rubbed it on your hand, if you did that enough, eventually you'd get like a bleeding scab kind of a thing. And if you kept doing that, that place would never recover on your hand. Um, but if you give it some time to rest, let your skin cells build back up, you would develop a callus, and then your body could uh, handle more of that stress. Your muscles and other parts of your, your physiology work the exact same way. So you need this week. This is the week that actually gets you um, the improvement that you're looking for. So stick to the plan. Maybe try to get a little bit more rest and maybe a little bit more food. Nothing crazy, but um, the name of the game for this week is recovery. All right, this covers the first five weeks of this program. I'm going to be releasing the second five weeks very shortly, so stay tuned for that. Um, I would also recommend that you head over to the um, website and the link below to read the article. There's some other links in there that really are going to be beneficial. There's my ultimate nutrition guide where I provide a body fat calculator, energy expenditure calculator. It's going to recommend calories and macros and, and it's got all kinds of stuff. It's all free. It's going to help you out. I've also got some links to some of my premium programs. So if you're the type of athlete who enjoys having a very detailed plan in terms of rest periods, what to shoot for, a good goal to shoot for time-wise or reps-wise in the wad, do that. Um, head over in the in description below, or you can actually just click the, click the link in the description below for some of my premium programs. I've found that that's a great intermediate step between very expensive, private, custom uh, programs for folks and a generic program like this one. So if you kind of want a little bit more detail, a little bit more help, that'll be a good resource for you. I've also included some more um, resources in terms of research-based um, recovery methods. So check that out. I'll give you a little tip. Uh, you know, supplements and things like that aren't really going to help your recovery. There's only one or two things that have actually got some decent scientific backing in terms of helping your recovery. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below or you can put them in the comments on the website. I don't really care, but I check both. Um, as always, you've got what you need to get out there and start training. Now it's up to you to do it. So get out there and put the work in. This is Jake from Tier 3 Tactical. Please like and subscribe.